On our minds recently was the topic of video games that were released broken and then had to be fixed by industrious fans, because we have to do everything around here, apparently. Okay, that's a little unfair, but the fact remains that some games could do with a bit of extra work to make them better, and often it falls to fans of the games in question to do that extra work just for the love of said game. So often, in fact, that we receive tons of suggestions from you, the outside Xbox viewers, for more examples to fill this follow-up video. So in a way, the fans are fixing the previous video. Seems appropriate. Enjoy, and we're spoilers ahead for the following games. to pick a low point in the Sonic the Hedgehog series of games. Because there are so many good games? <laughs> no. A strong contender for worst Sonic game, however, is Sonic the Hedgehog. Not the original 1991 game for the Sega Mega Drive, but rather the 2006 game of the same name that was intended as a series reboot, but which actually rebooted everyone's Sonic enthusiasm off a cliff and into a chasm full of spikes. So can I start collecting rings now, or...? Sonic, come back. To me. To us. Alright, settle in folks, we're gonna be here a while. Besides the impenetrable story, the game was also roundly panned for its camera system, controls, voice acting, having more glitches than a Venetian Snares album, and loading time so long that there might be people who started playing it back in 2006 who are still waiting for the next level to load. After its disappointing reception, Sega were perfectly willing to let Sonic the Hedgehog the game die delisting it from retailers in 2010, along with a bunch of other poorly received Sonic games in an attempt to increase the value of the series. But there was one intrepid fan who was not willing to let Sonic the Hedgehog 06 go gentle into that good night, an Argentinian programmer called Ian Chaos X Morris. Project 06, as Morris's fan version of Sonic the Hedgehog is known, has been in production since 2019 and is, by all accounts, a massive undertaking. Morris and his team of unpaid volunteers are basically remaking Sonic 06 in the Unity game engine while fixing its many problems and adding back in scrapped content and features as they go. Among the things fixed are the loading times, the graphics, which are now more detailed and colour graded more pleasantly, and numerous gameplay tweaks, including making Sonic actually go fast, unlike his sluggish appearance in the original game. Make no mistake, this is a labour of love, adding in fan favourite moves for Tails and Knuckles from the Sonic Adventure series and even letting players choose between Sonic's animations from the actual game or the better looking ones from when the game was being shown off at previews in 2005. Just be careful which parts of the Sonic fan community you take suggestions from would be my advice, otherwise you're going to have to program in a lot more makeout animations. I didn't want to come here. He left you no choice. True. But this is the last time. I'm tired of running damage control every time he makes a mess. Right. You're the control. And if that fails, I'm the damage. Doom 3 is a dark game. Not dark because it's a grim parable about scientists opening a gateway to hell and being overrun by demons, but literally dark in that someone has turned off all the lights on this bloody Mars base. This, it turns out, was a conscious decision by the developers who wanted to go in a more horror-oriented direction for Doom 3. As such, the darkness is there to make the game scarier and more oppressive, and to give you less of a chance to see oncoming enemies. The game did give you a flashlight, but crucially made you choose between holding that and holding your gun, often forcing you to fight in the dark.
needless to say, this was somewhat divisive among Doom fans, as a lot of them paid for an exciting first-person shooter, not a game that forced you to choose between thrilling demon slaying and actually being able to see anything. And so in stepped modder Glenn Frenzen Murphy, a mere three days after Doom 3 released to the public with the Doom 3 duct tape mod, which, to quote its description on the mod's homepage, works under the crazy presumption that a roll of duct tape has to exist somewhere on the Mars facility and sticks flashlights to your machine gun and shotgun. It's not even as game-breaking as it might seem at first glance. To keep things balanced, the duct tape mod only lets you attach the flashlight to two weapons, the machine gun and shotgun. And it also has a narrower beam than the regular flashlight, so it didn't completely eradicate the sense of fear and danger that the darkness created. The upside is, if you want to actually fight anything, you now can, and no longer have to just look at what is essentially a black JPEG while listening to the sounds of demons killing you. Unsurprisingly, this mod turned out to be rather popular. According to the author, it was downloaded 80,000 times in the first 24 hours it was available, and even id Software eventually took note. The Doom 3 BFG edition, released in 2012, included an armor-mounted flashlight that could be turned on and off at will, and that could be used at the same time as weapons, clearly inspired by the original quick and dirty duct tape mod. Mounted on the armor though, so clearly there is still no duct tape on Mars. I should really get on that. You know what people like? Weird games. Games about being a goose. Games about dating pigeons. Oh, hang on a minute. Maybe people just like birds. Well, one series was doing weird long before it was trendy, and that's the Mother Games. Describing the plot of these epic, humorous, and extremely odd RPGs is almost impossible. But you might get the vibe if I tell you that Mother 2, released under the name Earthbound in Western markets, starts with the game's hero Ness receiving an ominous warning from a bee-like creature from the future. before setting off on an adventure that includes fighting a whole host of super odd enemies, including a scalding cup of coffee. And oh look, this is a bird game after all. Earthbound was received extremely well in the West, so it was with some chagrin that the now sizeable Western Mother fan community discovered that Nintendo had no plans to localise the next game in the series, Mother 3, or even release it outside of Japan. Apparently, this was due to its themes and some adult content which led Nintendo to believe that it wouldn't sell. Whatever the reason, the upshot was that if you were a fan of Earthbound who didn't speak Japanese, you were all out of luck. Or, in it for the long haul and learning Japanese now. Hey, at least I can find out what I said in the last video. Oh. Anyway, anyone in any doubt as to how passionate the Western Mother fans were should consider what happened next. Surely one of the greatest acts of fandom ever, in which a team of mother enthusiasts spent thousands of hours translating over 1,000 pages of game text to produce an English translation of the game so that they could play it. It wasn't just a straight translation job either, they also had to do extensive hacking and testing to make sure that the text displayed properly, as well as localising things that only made sense in Japanese so that they could be appreciated by English speakers, like character names based on puns. It was a huge success, with the localization patch being downloaded over 100,000 times in the first week it was available. Nintendo, knowing a good thing when they saw it, quietly allowed it to happen, without intervening and shutting the project down. As another sign that Nintendo is happy the fans sorted out this western version of Mother 3, they even added Lucas, the main character of Mother 3, to Smash Bros. Why would you do that if you think we don't know who he is, eh Nintendo? Uh, yeah, do you know who Marth is? Okay, fair point. Or Roy? No. Shulk? Alright, stop, alright, stop. For those who I wish to protect, I will fight you! <laughs> Round one. Fight. The most important key to a fighting game's success is whether or not it lets you play as some kind of humorous bear. KO. You win. See? Tekken gets it. The second most important thing, however, is its netcode. That is to say how good the synchronization is between clients and servers when playing online, which is what lets you fight other people without lag, the importance of which cannot be overstated in a genre that relies so heavily on split-second timing. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. 
Street Fighter V is a great fighting game for a lot of reasons, not least of which is the ability to hit someone in such a way that a big fiberglass hot dog lands on their head and then they have to start the next round wearing it. I did it! Round 2 Fight! So as you can see, extremely good. One significant mark against Street Fighter V when it first released, however, was its online play, which was noticeably rough and prone to lag. Street Fighter V developers Capcom, however, didn't seem inclined to do anything about it. So for four long years, people just put up with it, and Street Fighter V developed a reputation as something of a letdown in fighting game enthusiast circles. That was until 2020, when a modder named Altimore discovered a bug that caused one player's game to lag behind the others when playing online, leading to what is known as rollback for one player that doesn't affect the other. Two days later, Altimore engineered a fix that ensured that players' game clocks never got too far ahead of each other, making sure that you never experience more rollback than your opponent. The Street Fighter V community was delighted with the fix, and a month later, in February 2020, Capcom released an official netcode adjustment for Street Fighter V that, while it did stop Altimore's patch from working, did seem to basically fulfill the same function, fixing the game for those who weren't online enough to seek out the fan fix on their own. So a big win for the fan community, and a big fiberglass hot dog on the head for Capcom. Aliens, Colonial Marines, many problems are well documented at this point, so we probably don't need to go into the fact that the story and characters were dreadful, the AI was broken, the shooting was awful, the aliens couldn't run at you properly, the graphics were... It sounds like you are going into it. Look, I'm still annoyed, okay? That's what made Aliens Colonial Marines so disappointing. Not just that it was a bad game, but that it was a bad game based on such a beloved movie, meaning it had tons of potential that hadn't been realised. But it's that love for Aliens that led to modder Templar GFX, aka James Dickinson, deciding that he wasn't going to play Aliens Colonial Marines, he was going to fix it. And so the Aliens Colonial Marines overhaul mod was born. A years long project that has seen Dickinson fix, among other things, the graphics, including improvements to lighting, shading and decals, and the game's imprecise gunplay, which was done by disabling something called fractal wandering that caused players' aim markers to be off by 10 to 15 pixels. The biggest effort, though, has gone towards fixing the game's AI. If you played Aliens Colonial Marines, you'll remember it gave sci-fi's most terrifying monsters a disappointing downgrade. For the majority of the game, you're either mowing down idiot aliens that sprint straight towards you like alien-shaped piñatas full of green goo, or trying to hide from wandering aliens who have all the grim Geiger-esque menace of hobbling space pensioners. Templar GFX spent most of his efforts tweaking the game's AI in order to make the aliens behave more naturally, a load of work that was undone by the game's only official patch, which was itself supposed to fix the AI. Famously, this patch contained a typo misspelling the word tether by adding an A to it, which not only meant the patch didn't work, keeping the aliens from moving between rooms and running on walls, but also that it broke all of Templar GFX's previous work to fix the AI. Thankfully, after three years of searching, Templar GFX was able to find the typo and rebuild the mod to work with the patch, to be even better than it was before. It's still not perfect. Without proper modding tools for the game, it never will be. But the overhaul mod is a significantly better experience than the original Aliens Colonial Marines. But then so is being kicked in the head by an escaped horse. So it's a low bar. The single player bit of Titanfall 2 was five short hours of glorious action starring human pilot Jack Cooper and his loyal Titan BT-7274. And five years later there's still a hole in our hearts from the ending where BT sacrifices his noble giant robot self and yeets you to safety. Protocol 3, protect the pilot. BT, what are you doing? Trust me. BT! It's the Iron Giant all over again. 
Titanfall 2 multiplayer, on the other hand, though similarly spectacular and significantly less heartbreaking, was also plagued by technical troubles and DDoS attacks that for a time made Titanfall 2 all but impossible to play online. Welcome back. That was the situation until the community-made Northstar mod came along, released in late 2021, and primarily the work of modder Bob the Bob. Northstar is a client which lets fans run their own custom servers in Titanfall 2, restoring stability to Titanfall 2 multiplayer and rejuvenating the entire multiplayer scene. Who gonna stop me, huh? As commenter Kronos Gaming put it, we gave the game multiplayer back whenever Respawn wouldn't fix the servers. Not only did the Northstar client give Titanfall 2 a stable, decentralized multiplayer experience that could potentially keep the game alive and playable for years to come, but in its old-school server browser, you could and can find cool new modes, from multiplayer FPS genre classics to wild wild new pseudo sports, including fastball, a brilliant deathmatch mode in which BT absolutely yeets you into the map at the start of every round. It's just like old times. BT! Got you. Have you heard the story of how we came to be werewolves? Aye, that sounds like as in all matters of faith, though, the reality is more complicated. We had many brilliant suggestions in the comments of our previous video, but one suggestion far outnumbered all the others. And that suggestion was... Uh... All Bethesda games. Now, clearly we don't have time to cover that within an average human lifespan, so let's just talk about the most popular Bethesda game to receive the fanfix treatment. Skyrim. Specifically, there's the enormous unofficial Skyrim Special Edition patch, which eliminates thousands of bugs in the game. Not those ones, sadly. Many of the changes in the unofficial patch are fixes for minor bugs that you might never even notice during a normal playthrough, such as the fact that the Morthal water wheel turns the wrong way for the flow of the river, or the fact that these two bags full of mammoth cheese at Steam Crag Camp are apparently incorrectly flagged as owned by another character. Hey, who among us hasn't popped a post-it note on their cheese in the office fridge? Other stuff that the unofficial patch fixes is a bit more strange, like the curious case of this stone wall in the royal palace at Windhelm that bleeds like it's made of flesh when struck with a weapon. That is some horror movie sh** right there. Our favourite bug fixed by the unofficial patch though is one found at the end of the questline for everyone's favourite cuddly murder furries, the Companions. In the mission Glory of the Dead, you attend the funeral of Kodlak, the closest thing the companions have to a leader, at the Skyforge in Whiterun. The old man, Kodlak, he's dead. As you might imagine, this funeral is a sombre affair as the companions pay their respects to a beloved member who has served the guild for 20 years. Unfortunately, if you bring your vampire buddy Serana along, she's not going to let all this sweet forge equipment go to waste and sees this as the perfect opportunity to get some smithing done. Uh, right in the middle of the funeral ceremony. I'm not sure Strike While the Iron's Hot really applies here. Members of the Circle, let us withdraw to the Underforge to grieve our last together. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video about more times that fans had to fix the game. Uh, if you missed the original, uh, you can check it out up here. Uh, if you want to watch something else from Outside Xbox, we've got a video down here, which is actually from Outside Extra, which I should have said, but I said Outside Xbox instead. Oh, That's Outside Xbox. It. That's Outside Extra. I'm a fan of both, and I fixed my sentence. So in a way, it, it, this is the perfect outro. Seamless. Yeah. Complain, complain about it? I don't think so.